DEI is a huge step backwards for our country. It has taken generations, not to mention a civil war, a civil rights movement, to move past a, a stain on our nation's history. But we have made tremendous progress. But to codify discrimination in an effort to remove discrimination is a woeful, woeful uh, initiative. Uh, and would undo generations of progress we have made as a nation on this. Every tear, every drop of blood, the sweat of our founders, our forefathers that have fallen would be in vain for us to continue and to reverse the path that we have. We are debating legislation that denies the sky is blue, water is wet, and racism is real. The major provision of the bill says to ban anything that acknowledges racism. And a few pages later, in the exact same bill, there are multiple provisions discussing the presence of racism. This Republican approach is as predictable as it is nonsensical. On one hand, they're saying that racism does not exist. On the other hand, they are saying there is rampant reverse racism. Well, how do you reverse something that never existed in the first place? Riddle me that. While this Republican policy may have a new name, it's the same old tired game. Look, y'all are entitled to your opinions, but not a denial of the facts. DEI initiatives destroy morale, decrease recruitment, and potentially violate federal law. These initiatives spread divisive and exclusive ideologies in our federal government workplaces, and taxpayers are left footing the bill. For these reasons, I support the Dismantle DEI Act. H.R. 8706 aims to repeal the federal DEI programs across the federal government. I'm an original co-sponsor of this, this bill, and, and I've, I've noted some of the, the comments here. And I believe we should take a, a, a step back and, and ask ourselves, you know, what do we seek in our republic regarding individual rights, liberties, and freedoms? And do you believe in those core tenets of our republic or not. We have, we have an opportunity before us with this bill to push back against it. The, the ranking member mentioned a sweeping attack. Yes, this is what we have suffered. We have suffered as a nation, a sweeping attack against equality. That's exactly what we're fighting against. Another colleague mentioned oppression and degradation. It's exactly what we're pushing back against. This is a bill that eliminates government-sponsored oppression of individual rights, liberties, and freedoms in the land of the free. Freedom of opportunity, not result. Our founding documents talked about having a nation uh, where we recognize that all people were created equal. Martin Luther King talked about that being a promissory note because as we know, that had not always been the case and has not always been the case in our country. Uh, and it took too long and has taken too long for us to get where we need to go. But he also said that we shouldn't use the results of segregation, and I think we could also say discrimination, as the justification for future segregation or discrimination. That's what this bill seeks to do. Uh, it seeks to reverse some of the policies that have instead of looked at merit or qualifications or the like and institute a policy where you are hired on those things instead of where the first thing we look at is factors about our character, our personality, our skin color, our sex, whatever the case is in qualifications for a job. And I'll just point out, you know, there's many of these examples, but the Air Force's Diversity and Inclusion Resource Book has recommendations for unconscious bias, race-specific learning, cognitive diversity teaming, general diversity and inclusion and belonging, and it includes a book title called White Rage. Uh, this is the kind of things that are going. We should not discriminate at all in our government. This bill titled the Dismantling DEI Act is an utter disgrace. Uh, having sat and read the text in preparation for today's markup, I have yet another example to tell my constituents about the unserious work of the Republican Party. Now, I'll work with anyone serious about progress who wants to center the, the people who call this country home. This isn't it. Do you all know your history? 
Do you know American history? The original Constitution, the original Constitution counted enslaved individuals as three-fifths of a person. During World War II, the federal government forcibly relocated and incarcerated 110,000 Japanese Americans. The FHA practiced redlining in the 1930s and 60s to deny mortgages to black Americans, which is why we have a racial wealth gap today. I could go on. The GI Bill, which is supposed to be race neutral, denied access to black Americans, denying them equal access to education and housing benefits, which is why we do not have generational wealth. Don't talk to me about merit when those black servicemen fought for our freedoms. And I'd also just like to pick, take a personal note of privilege to say, please keep Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s name out of your mouths. Yes. Your perversion of his words yes. and his mission when his children have asked you yes. to stop invoking his name and perverting his work when he was a proud and unapologetic black man fighting for equality for black Americans and all marginalized people. So you all are entitled to your opinions, but not a denial of the facts. But I'm not surprised that you would deny American history. What I am, though, is committed. Committed to speaking truth to power, committed to standing up for marginalized communities and vulnerable people, committed to ensuring that everyone has equal opportunity to buy a house, to work a job, to pursue higher education, and to live in a society that is fair and just. A colleague across the aisle invoked the phrase of, we must do everything to stop government-sponsored oppression. Well, I've just enumerated numerous examples which is exactly why we have legislation and an executive order to reverse this harm. And that is why I'm committed to opposing this bill and urge my colleagues to do the same. Gentle lady yields back. Uh, we'll go back, we'll rotate sides. Uh, Chair recognize Mr. Perry from Pennsylvania, and then we'll recognize Tlaib after that. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield my time, such time as he may consume, to the gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Higgins. I thank my colleague, and I appreciate my Democrat colleague for exemplifying exactly the kind of oppression of freedoms that we're referencing. How about we'll quote whoever we want to quote? How about that's my First Amendment right? That's exactly the kind of baked-in oppression. Like, how dare a white Republican quote Martin Luther King. We actually had a congressman say that just now in this committee. Well, and th thank you, good lady, for once again exemplifying the type of oppression that we stand against. You know I'm right. You know I'm right. Order, order. Mr. Higgins and, has the floor. And we, and we will quote who we please to quote. A disgrace. And we will continue to speak freely because now I'm a veteran. That's the country that I serve. That's a constitution I sworn allegiance to. And that, that oath has no expiration date. I will fight for it with my last life's blood. For my right to speak freely and yours, good lady, you will never hear me saying, how dare you quote anybody you, you please to quote. And that exemplifies, America, precisely the type of institutional oppression that my colleague, Mr. Cloud's bill, for which I'm an original co-sponsor, hopes to push back against. But Mr. Higgins, have you read time. your own bill? Has been have you read your own bill? Uh, because no, it no. is trying Mr. to regulate Perry, speech. Lady. It is actually but, hey, Ms. regulating Ms. you're out of order. Ms. Stansbury, you're out of order. Perry. It's Mr. Perry's time. Chair recognizes Mr. Perry. 